Hey, what's going on, man? It's your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are live on the industry's most wanted. You see it? Industries. Podcast. Most Podcast. Wanted. Listen, somebody was trying to keep us from being great tonight, but that is not happening. The devil is alive, man. Shout out to Kasaya, man. Shout out to you, bro. Being patient. We, we getting through all this. Thank you for being here tonight on Industries Most Wanted. Go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Kasai, a.k.a. Kizza, man. I am... Honored to be here on the Ghost Podcast in Tampa. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, we, um, you know, we briefly talked before we uh, we started recording. Um, you're from Columbus, Ohio, so I want to just hone in on that first before we even talk about anything else. Um, being in Columbus, Ohio, what was it like growing up for you out there? Um, it was, it was a little, it was a little bit of everything. I mean, I got. I got in trouble a lot, but like I wasn't like in the streets, you know, like it was like more so I just got in trouble, you know, for just you know, doing certain things. But being a kid, obviously, but like yeah. um it was pretty cool. I mean, that's where most of my like passion for music was. It like started when I was younger anyway, and like my uncle and I would um uh, sit around and dance with freestyle and stuff like that. And, yeah. Like I uh I once went on a cruise before in Bahamas when I was like maybe like seven, something <laughs> like that. And like there was just some random music popping off and like I ran away from my family and got to the middle of the dance floor and started dancing with everybody. And my mom was like, Where's Kasai? Where's Kasai? And they just all they was all rooting for me and stuff. I was just, <laughs> that is so. super dope. I absolutely love that. I love the fact that you started this at a young age. You found out early on what your passion was. Oftentimes people don't find out until, you know, adulthood or later in life what their passion is. And you absolutely found that at a young age. When did you really discover that you could sing? Um, that's the funny thing. Um I I kind of been like, like fake singing, like my whole life. But like, I got into choir in high school. Okay. Um, I didn't want to. It was an elective, and I was like, you know, why, why they put me in choir? Like, this is this is not me. And then like, I discovered my voice through other people as well. And then like, you know, going through piano practices and stuff like that. It's like, it was kind of like a whole new setting for me and i was just like i really i really found my voice and i can do certain things that you know some other people can't and which i'm very honored about and blessed about and i feel like just god gave me that gift so i just um took it took it to another level and then it was kind of crazy because like a year later they put me in the honor choir and now i'm going to states and stuff like that and performing with people who've been there for like been there for years since freshman year and you know been doing it for a long time so i'm just very grateful for it that is amazing and, uh, let's talk about some of your influences i know that it you know from reading through your information some of the greats obviously uh chris brown you know the big michael jackson mj trey songs mario <laughs> usher like these are all artists that not only have a voice but they have a talent you know a lot of them can dance you know um what is it about them artists specifically outside of you know them being able to sing and dance that really had them to be an influence for you um to me, it has to be the grit. It has yeah. to be the grit, the perseverance, the and especially the heart. Um, the reason why you know I got Michael Jackson up there. I also got a little uh, a little poster of Post Malone. And the reason why is because like those are the two, one of the two most influential to me because it's like they had a lot of heart. Even though um, you know with Michael Jackson, a lot of people try to throw you know dirt on his name and stuff like that. Yeah, he's such a great dude, and he touched millions and millions of people to where all he could do, all he have to do is stand, and people are like crying and passing out and stuff. I'm like, yo, this is like something like only he can do. But I'm very inspired by this. I know if he can do it, I, I can do. I can do this. Absolutely, you know, I can do this. Absolutely, and that's a big motivation because, like you said, you know, Mike, in my opinion, was absolutely 
the greatest to ever do it. Um, there's nobody else that could ever touch what he did. And along with being great comes a lot of criticism. You know, there's always going to be people out here who have negative stuff to say, but I love the fact that he just pushed through that. He never allowed that to dim his light. And that is so motivating to me because the bigger we get in what we do, there's always going to be haters and there's going to be criticism and there's going to be envy we just have to make sure we don't allow that to dim our light so it sounds like that's the same journey and the same path that you're on absolutely all right yes ma'am so what is the music scene like out there in columbus like i shared with you you know i have family from columbus but i haven't been there and gosh it's been a very 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 long time <laughs> what's the music scene like out there for you um to me, it's a it's a it's a mixture of a lot. I mean, because I know a lot of a lot of local artists who like. There's some that make. I don't know if you heard of Pink Panthers. I don't um, think I have. Um, her and Ice Spice made a song last year. It'd be okay. like the Boys of Laya, that one. <laughs> and so they make they make music like that. I know somebody who make music like that, and then a lot of people, you know, like hip hop, but centrally when the shows i go to and support my peoples and my peers and new artists is like r&b yes. like it's r&b and i love it because we need more of that um i feel like people love saying r&b is dead and stuff like that like there's literally people out here who can like blow away crowds and they're just not getting the right type of recognition and stuff like that so definitely like it's more so R and B for me, but um, yeah. I yeah, agree. R and B is my first love. Like I love all genres of music. I'm I'm a music lover. I'm a I've been a music head for years. But if I had to narrow it down to my very first love, R and B is it because like I like R and B going back to like the old school R and B. You know, like the '90s and the early 2000s. Oh, yes. Like that's, that's that feel day. good R and B. Um, is it safe to say that you're bringing that type of sound, that feel good music, through your music, um, but with a current twist to it? I feel like you hit it right on the nose because I feel like that's <laughs> that's that's like the goal. I just want to bring like the authenticity back, like the authentic back, the real back. Um, yes. And so like there's songs like um, I don't know if you heard like Two Sides um, is a song I have named Enemies and it's like it's going through situations, something like confessions, like the whole Usher thing, yes. but it has like a little twist to it. And it's not <laughs> what you, you know, it's not what you're usually used to. So it's like, oh, this is, you know, but um, yeah, I, that's definitely what I want to do, especially with R&B. Like that's my first love as well. Yeah. Um, Like my mom used to always play 90s R&B, like now you know what they were saying while we was cleaning. Yeah. But, it like stuck with me. It stuck with me. <laughs> John B. All them. Yes, that's that good music right there. Most definitely. Um, how was your was your mom and your family very supportive of your, your music early on? I know your uncle was because he was one that's help, helping you out there get to it. Um, but was the rest of your family on board with you? Um, they were. They are. They're. Um, you know. It was like it was new for me because they know like I don't like to I like to be very respectful around them. I don't like to cuss around them or nothing. Understood. But when it, you know, when it comes to like my art, <laughs> it's like it's a little different. So they be yeah. like, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you up, I'm gonna get you. I I'm know like, that's oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> I, wait I got a little older or something like that anyway. right right so i'm gonna keep it g you know what i'm saying <laughs> that is dope no I, I love that that is really dope because you know the music is about being authentic being your true self you know what i'm saying and i mean you're an adult so it's like if you gotta throw a little profanity in there here you know every now and again ain't nothing wrong with that you know what i'm saying so right. You know, it's just about really keeping it true to yourself and then also putting out music that fans are going to really resonate with, you know, and it sounds like that's absolutely very important for you. Oh, yes, I agree. Indeed, it is. 
So are you at all interested in tapping into other genres? Because like I, you know, like Afrobeats is, is really climbing the charts right now. And, you know, there's country music. There's so many different genres. Are there other ones you're interested in tapping into? Honestly, um, I just always visualize myself as like pretty much open to anything. Like I don't want nobody to ever like put a lid on, <laughs> you know, my bottle or anybody else's bottle like you know creativity is just everywhere so i'm open like I, I wrote like a whole bunch of country songs i got pop songs um stuff like that i mean i'm just always I'm just always writing things and always trying to be creative outside of you know what i'm known getting known for yeah you know, absolutely so. Let's talk about the creative process. Do you actually sit down and write? Like, do you have writing sessions? You know, how does that portion come together? I'm curious. Um, you know, it's funny. Usually, I'll be on the grind. I'll be like, um, if I'm not working here in the studio, I'm working out there. So, um, usually, like, something pops up in my head or a situation happens, and it's like, I come up with a line in my head and I start to just jot it down and like it becomes an idea and then it like like transforms into a song and so like oh this is kind of nice let's see how it goes if I if I put it on you know paper you know and then it usually comes out nice but nine times out of ten it's usually from situations I endure and like i want to share it to the audience in a different way because you know it's not about me but um yeah or sometimes i might go to the club to fill out the scenery yeah. so there's songs there's songs like i want to you know get bouncy and have that club vibe like like malibu or my shawty um berserk things of that nature so really i just like to stay in a neutral like i try to stay balanced because I be inside a lot. I be yeah. inside the house a lot. Uh, I mean, I yeah. am too. If I'm not working, I like to be in the house. I'm a homebody. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slick. I call myself a social introvert. Like I'm, I'm social when I have to be, but I'm slick, really introverted. You know, like I don't know. It's just a lot of craziness that goes on in the world, and I feel like today we all have to almost walk around with our head on a swivel most of the time, and it's like. Who wants to have to do with that all the time? So it's like when you walk through your front door, that's like your peace of mind. That's your safe space right there. Um, does writing help you? Like, you know, is it like a mental therapy for you? It definitely is. Yeah. Because, well, man, Talk to us I about it. You know, um, life really does like. Be lifing. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be life in pretty yeah. much it'd be life in i can't like put it in words but like there's so many things that go on you know um especially when you're trying to have a love life you're trying to you know be you're trying to get financially stable stuff like that and trying to just have a balanced lifestyle things get hectic or certain situations you can't control so yes. it's like with me i want to like I know music is my therapy. So like if I'm mad, if I'm mad, then um or upset, I'll find, you know, some time to sit down and write. I don't want to retaliate against anybody or anything like that. Like I just go in my own space and that'll be my therapy and stuff like that. So Absolutely. Um, I agree. I think that we all, um, as humans, we go through stuff, you know, like, like you said, and we both said life be lifing. And, um, the thing about that is we have to find ways to, to kind of soothe that, if that makes sense, because, you know, one thing I've been talking about a lot on my podcast is mental health and mental, um, you know, getting mental, you know, different things for mental therapy, because the world can be ugly out there. We all go through anxiety. We all go through stuff. And it's like, before it turns into something bigger, we have to find something that kind of like will soothe that. And it sounds like writing for you and doing music for you is absolutely your mental therapy. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Um, it definitely is. It just helps a lot. It make, <laughs> makes everything like way much better. I mean, I, I, I talk to God beforehand. I'd be like, you know, before the studio session, like, you know, <laughs> just guide me, you know, before I, but like, 
otherwise I just like just get carried away yeah you know and the sounds the melodies and stuff like that they're so soothing to the head and like they just take you to a whole nother dimension so most definitely what was the first song that you released out on the digital platforms take us back first <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> um okay so my first my first song it was titled it was called drippy um and it was released on youtube okay but it wasn't it was released on like all platforms but i took it down i forgot why but um i didn't because i was scared to release music in school and it were it released in 2019 so after i graduated um i released it and like there was so many people like that liked it and started like messing with me from then there's still like my day one people who mess with me now just from that so like i just support the love and stuff like that it's like um but it was it was a rap song okay I was like, I was, <laughs> you, you was feeling yourself you was drippy <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, was definitely you gotta start somewhere <laughs> right you know <laughs> start somewhere so so okay so that was the first record that you put out let me ask you this out of all the songs that you have released on the digital platforms which one is the most personal for you the most heartfelt the most heartfelt um the most heartfelt right now i would say one lover okay um it's a song that I feel like it gets over it gets overlooked in some cases, but it's like I it, it relate it, it's so personal to me because I wrote it, I did write it from like just my personal experiences, like yeah, you know, just in hopes of finding that person who wants to be with me and only me because you know we, we live in a generation now where things are so toxic and you know trust it's just all me over i the, know <laughs> <laughs> it's just all over the place so um you know i just want to find that one person that like can be there at every show or support me and I support yeah. them and stuff like that so that's definitely like my most personal record right now and mm. um uh either that or enemies but um definitely one lover is there it's like the the whole guitar um my man my man's john did an excellent job on that it's like a guitar at the beginning and then um it's an usher sample oh as well um 8701 uh can you help me oh my that, gosh i can't yeah. i gotta go check that out i love that yeah. So, and let me yeah. just say this, any young woman who wouldn't want to just be with you and you only is crazy because you're talented, you're a handsome young man. I can tell you got a good head on your shoulder. So, ladies, don't be playing out here. <laughs> <laughs> ladies of Columbus, don't be playing with him. <laughs> <laughs> now, it is, I understand, like, it's tough because, like, I had my son at a young age. I had my son at 19 and, you know, I was a single mom and it was tough. And, you know, I went through those motions of trying trying to trust because, you know, his father wasn't around and he cheated on me. And so I completely understand it's when, when we're a good person, we have a good heart, you know, it's like, we want that same reciprocation, but in today's era, sadly, it's hard to find that, you know, like, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's difficult to find. So I do pray that your queen comes along and she is true to you. Cause you deserve all that. You deserve that love and that good happiness. Most definitely. Thank you. I appreciate you so much, Tampa. Absolutely. Is there a visual for that one? For one lover, there is. There Whoa. is actually. It was it was shot by um my guy MS Visuals. Shout out to Matt. Um, <laughs> very dope. Very dope visuals. Like seems like a movie. Seems cinematic. Cinematic. I was about to say that you took the words out of my mouth. So I'm going to definitely check that out too because I love those cinematic feels. Like you can tell the difference between cinematic and something that's just like just a video shot. That cinematic feel is like it's almost like it's a movie. You know what I'm saying? And that's where we're at because we're in a content era. So you got to put out that good content, right? Oh, yeah. um, 
taking it back to 2023, what was your biggest accomplishment? You know, whether it's your life accomplishment or uh, musically for the year 2023, what was that for you? Biggest accomplishment? Um, well, I think obtaining a, obtaining a deal with a record label. Um, mm, congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, they go by the name of Arrow Entertainment. Okay. Um, it's a new and upcoming label. And my manager was just doing some research and they were looking for talent. And so they reached out and they we got on a meeting. We uh, set things up and they said what they could provide for us. And it's like it, it, it worked out. They were looking for a star and... I feel like I fit that part. We both feel like on both parties, we, you know, so I think it worked out perfectly well. You know, God, you know, just works in mysterious ways. So shout Absolutely. out to them as well. Absolutely. Then, when did you, know, you, when did you ink the deal on that? What month? Oh, I'd like to say it was the week of the um, Christmas. It okay. was like, I feel like a, it was a couple of days after Christmas. So just fairly, fairly recently. Fairly recently, yes. That's a great Christmas gift. <laughs> it is like <laughs> they sent me they, they sent me the papers and like it was a little certificate. I was just like, man, we gotta celebrate and everything. I was yeah. just very, very humble. Absolutely, as you should be. You know what I'm saying? Because even though you're very talented, just for someone else to see that within you, you know what I'm saying? That's definitely a humbling experience. It's a great way to not only end the year in the year because it was, you know, like you said, right before Christmas, but it's a great way to start the new year. So with that being said, you know, we're still fairly new in 2024. You've got this label situation. You've got a great team around you. What are some of the things that we can expect from you like in the coming months? In the coming months. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> I know we are, I can't, you know, spill the beans too much, but we are, we got <laughs> another uh, song coming out. Um, it's definitely, it's a pop record. Okay. Um, it's definitely going to be a visual behind that. It's another type of cinematic vibe. Uh, this one. Um, I'm very excited about it. Uh, the team has put so much into it and we have, you know, did so much. So it's definitely something I'm excited about. I can't wait for everyone else to hear. Excuse me. And um, yeah, I I'm mean, that's, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say that's absolutely dope. So yeah, no, <laughs> you had anything else to say about it. So when is that uh, anticipated to release? Ooh, um, I know we want to have things done by the end of the month. Okay. Uh, maybe towards next month, but <laughs> we'll definitely, we'll definitely have to keep everyone up to date. Absolutely. Yeah, because you don't never want to rush the process with anything. You know, when you do good work and great work, you want the the rollout and everything to be completely you know, where it needs to be because, you know, putting music together, putting visuals together, is that's a lot of work. Right. It is. It's a lot of work. <laughs> and especially, you know, once you get that video back from the videographer, there might be some things that you want to tweak in there a little bit. So now you got to wait for the edits to come back. And um, mm. so that's definitely understandable. Are you going to be doing any traveling this year, you know, for your music? Um. I would say traveling in particular to music. I mean, I might have some opportunities down the way, the most definitely. But um, I know I'd be in and out of Detroit. Shout out to Detroit because they always show me love down there. But like, Big music city, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, not really. I mean, I do plan on going to um, a couple, visit a couple of different states this year just to celebrate and, you know, have a balanced life of like traveling and you know just enjoying life as a young adult so yeah absolutely and this is what i want to say to you if you do ever decide to come out here to the atlanta market 
let me know and it would be my honor to you to have you come through my studio so we could do this in person you know what i'm saying so that way we could get the real deal cameras popping and you know what i'm saying so <laughs> make it make maybe put that on your bucket list for this year come to atlanta because atlanta's a great music market there's a lot going on there's always opportunities for artists that's what brought me here you know i'm from tampa obviously hence the name but i moved out here a decade ago and it's been a blessing because there's so much going on in the r&b scene is is big out here right now there's some mm -hmm. phenomenal r&b acts out here so yeah maybe maybe think about coming to the atl talk to your label and your team about it oh, oh definitely i um forgot to mention like um i don't know if you know Authentic Empire. A. Of course. E. Big AE. Shout out to Boom Man. Shout out to Boom Man. Um, yeah, I went down there. Uh they actually had uh South by Southwest. That was my first event they set up for me. And uh that's where I first performed at and it kicked off my music career. So definitely shout out to them and they gave me that platform. Um so yeah, I mean I definitely I went to ATL a couple of times for to to you know, scope out the scenery with Boom Man and them and just um, be in that area. But I definitely have to come back out. I do want to get a get an up close, you know, interview and stuff like that. Absolutely. And, I would love that. Yeah. And, and then what we'll do is we'll plan it out to make sure that while you're here, maybe we can get you involved with, you know, maybe a performance or other interviews, you know, just make it make sense while you're out here, whether it be two, three, four days, we'll just fill your calendar up. I can tap you in with the right people. We'll make sure you get, you know, get as much attention going as while you know, as possible while you're out here. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. That sounds wonderful. So let's also take it to another side of the entertainment industry. Does film interest you at all? Are you interested in getting into acting or is that something that you have already tapped into? Um, not as of recently. I, as a kid, um, I was, I did audition for Disney. Um, hey. Disney, Disney is my favorite network. Uh, yeah. Anybody who needs to know that. Um, I love all the classic movies of Disney and the shows. But um, I was I auditioned. I got the role, but the thing was, it cost like so much, and it was like we, you know, we couldn't afford that at that time. And like, you know, so I was just like, ah, man. <laughs> but, um, I definitely was in theater arts. I was in show choir. So um, I did I did a little bit of uh, a little bit of everything with acting and skits and stuff like that and um that's what this this next song is about actually mm. um it's going to be like skits involved but i'm very excited about that um but yes i i, I am interested in acting and film and stuff like that hopefully i can so do something it's safe to say at some point in time we'll see you on the big screen you know outside oh. of the music videos we're gonna see you in film we're gonna be watching right Oh yes, yes or no? That's gonna be fire. <laughs> Def, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you on that because, you know, even though I know you're young and you still have a lot of longevity in your music career, film mm -hmm. has a really longevity to it. Like, you think about some of these actors be like 85 and they still do it. <laughs> and that's kind of how I feel with, you know, me doing what I'm doing on the media side. I'm in my 40s now. So it's like, I feel like, you know, I can still got a long way to go. You know what I'm saying? So that's what excites me about it. Cause I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface. Cause I'm like, shoot, I could be doing this for another 40 years and be good. Not that I want to work that much longer, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I that wouldn't is... even guess you was in your forties. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm humbled. <laughs> I, I, I drink a lot of water and I work out and I mind my business. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> so that yeah. is that a painting behind you of, of Michael Jackson? Uh, this one? Um, no, I think it's just like a like a kind of canvas, maybe. It is. It's, That's what it costs. Like, yeah. So dope. Where did you, if you don't mind me asking, where did you get that? Because I absolutely love it. That's a good question. My uh, <laughs> my mom got it for me actually. <laughs> nice gift. That's a beautiful gift. Shout out to your mom. Oh, yeah. Shout out to my mama. I love it. I love it. That is really, really dope. So have you been working or collabing with any other artists in your city? Um, In my city. Um, 
it's been a long time since I had any collabs. I mean, I think I did one last year. Shout out to my boy Ronda Don. Um, it's like one of my childhood friends, and we we actually I just found out last year that he does music, mm. and he was in my town, <laughs> and so we we like linked up and like made a song called Gangsta Love, and that was like most of the recent. But I work with um, so different genre artists. Like there's one that does like rock, and his name is Trayton Thompson, but he goes by Trigger Trey. Okay. Um. And then I work with my guy, CJ Vibes, in my earlier stages of music. Uh, shout out to him as well. That's my brother. Uh, but otherwise than that, I ain't really, I don't think. Oh, and my guy, I don't know if you heard of R&B Nas. Uh, I have Nas it. A, I have it. His name is Najee DeLeon. He's from your but, city? He is. Yes, ma'am. I'll have to um, check him out. I like that name. <laughs> <laughs> he said he's... he. He calls himself the R&B king of Ohio, and he proves it every single time I see him. So shout out to him. I'm definitely um, going to check him out. Yes, he's definitely very talented. We got a, we got a little song together. Um, that's pretty much the most recent I've been working on, though. Uh, really, I just, I don't know. People be trying, people be trying to charge the features, especially when, like, you're, um, what's the word? Not knowing yeah, like, yet. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. like they gotta two, humble themselves a little bit. Yeah, it's like two fifty. It's like two fifty for a feature. I was like, bro, are we gonna get on billboards or something? Or <laughs> you better you better make sure we get a BET performance or something. But no, like... for real. For real. <laughs> like this is what I wanna say to anybody out there who's like, you know, fairly new or starting out. Cause I actually spoke on this recently on my Instagram. Um, when people first start out, and this is for anybody that may see this, you know, at any point in time, when you first start out or your name's not really out there yet, we've got to do, there's a lot of free work that we're going to have to do. When I first started my career in, in journalism and media about 13 years ago, I did so many free interviews because I was still trying to get my name out there. Then I when I first started charging, I was literally charging like $25 to do interviews because, again, I was still trying to get my name out there. So I say that, you know, he made a great point. If, if you're still on the rise and coming up, you know, work now and get to the bag later. That's the way I try to look at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, get that work in because if, you know, you don't ever want to miss out on an opportunity because this young man right here is a platinum selling artist. We're manifesting it. You get what I'm saying? So don't <laughs> miss out on your opportunity. If I was a singer, I would be working with him right now. I promise you that because I've heard his music. I've heard his vocals. I've heard the arrangements that he does on his songs. He has a great voice. He's humble. So don't miss them opportunities. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Work with him. I had to throw it out there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. Because I'm a big advocate for that. You know, like some of these artists, they just, they have to humble themselves. We're going to leave it right there. You know what I'm saying? So um, where are you at with your music? Are you in album mode or are you working mostly on singles right now? Um, I think we're mostly just working in singles. Understood. Um, but... I just know when an album do becomes in the thought process and the works, best believe I want it to be like a classic. Like, yes. you know how like there's there's Chris Brown's self-titled album. There's, you know, Thriller, um, freaking Confessions. Yes. I, I'm definitely going, I want to give that type of vibe. I'm definitely going to. So my team, my label, we're going to make sure that's going to pop when we do ready, when we are ready. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. You want it to be bigger than life, you know, like yes. they, that, when it goes out there to the world, like it's out there. So you want to make sure that it's <laughs> as close to perfection as possible. Most definitely. Oh, yeah. Who do you have engineering your music? Shout them out. Um, Lately, I've been engineering myself. Okay. But I just sent a couple tracks out to um the engineer named Bo Vallis and okay. he actually worked with um Pharrell Pharrell's mm. album um Girl and I think um Beyonce one of Beyonce's albums 
I know she has a lot, but um, shout out to him. And then also shout out to Vino V, Vino V the Legacy. Um, is, he's like my brother. That's another person I collaborated with, but he's in, he's in, he's actually in your city. Oh, and, okay. Um, he definitely is the GOAT engineer. Uh, when it comes to mixing my stuff, we got a song called Bring Me Back to Life. And it's just like, it's, it's a whole vibe for real, for real. He did his thing on that. So shout out to him. But really besides myself, that's, um, those are the two people that really engineer everything. So shout and out to them. You know, it's much love. That's important because especially when you're a singer, it's a lot more uh, tedious and time consuming and a lot more work to mix the vocals of somebody who's singing versus if it's a trap rapper, you know what I'm saying? Like right, right. to get them vocals all the way. Right. So, you know, shout out to those engineers who are putting that in you also, how long you've been engineering? Um, that's the funny thing. I, I, I started, um, in 2019 along with actually writing and making music. So for that song drippy, I actually made the beat and then I wrote the song. And then I released it. But um, so since 2019, um, I started recording off my phone, uh, GarageBand, if anybody yeah. is familiar with that. Yep. Um, GarageBand. And then I went on to FL Studio, yeah. one of the best softwares ever. Yeah. Saved my life. Um, <laughs> but yeah, from then on, it was like, it was amazing. I don't know if you heard the Christmas song. Um, it's titled Next to You. Um, but it's like a bouncy ding 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 ding. It's it's pretty cool. But um I made that beat as well. So oh, um, okay. Okay, so you out here hitting every aspect of it. I love that. Yes, ma'am. I just I don't know, I just try to be open to everything. Um, Ladies, he's talented. Tap in. <laughs> <laughs> he is talented tap in tap in most definitely don't miss out on that blessing right there <laughs> I appreciate it <laughs> that is dope well listen I want to go ahead and um check out the record never know but what I typically do is I like to only run a portion of it because I like to entice people to actually go to the digital platforms and stream it it's important that, that that's where you they need to run your streams up because as a music artist you have to get them streams in order to get the payouts you get what i'm saying so we're gonna run a portion of the song before we do that tell everybody where they can follow you at on your social media you can follow me on instagram twitter tiktok and all of them is kasaya music it's k-a-s-i-y-a music and i'll give you a follow right back and i love y'all i know that's right um who do you want to shout out to uh shout out to my family man holding it down shout out to team kizza man you know y'all yeah uh, i love y'all um but my biggest shout out is to god for giving me this platform to present myself in front of you and the whole audience who's watching um shout out to my team and my label um shout out to all my family and friends I appreciate all of y'all. Shout out um, to you. Shout out to you because uh, you're dope. <laughs> shout out to me respectfully. Uh, there you go. Don't forget about yourself because you are out here making it happen. You know what I'm saying? You're making yeah. it happen. You're doing your thing. I got one more question before we check out some of this record. We are live once again. Industries most. Wanted. Big industries most wanted. I need you to go ahead. I like that. Boom. <laughs> go ahead and tell everybody what makes you the industries most wanted. Um, just feel like I I, I got that it factor. Um, I it's all about the heart. You know, it's it's not about me. It's about how the audience receives everything. So whenever I'm performing. It's like, I want to see people like reacting in a way and captivating that energy, yes. you know? So, you know, when it comes to performing, all I want to do is give off that energy and show that like the love is always reciprocated, you know, no matter which, uh, you know, how you feel about like everything else, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, well, we yeah. about to check out this record. 
again, we're going to give you guys just a portion because it is out on the digital platforms already, right? It is. Um, I definitely know it's taken a couple minutes. It's taken a couple of days to like come on other platforms, but I know it's on Spotify and a few others. It's on YouTube as well. Okay, awesome. Well, we're going to listen to a little bit of it um, because I always, again, you know, when we do our reviews or interviews, we like to entice people to actually go to the digital for, uh, platforms and stream it because it's important that you guys support these artists on these digital platforms, run them streams up. I'm talking like listen to it at least 10, 15 times a day. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so it's called Never Know, but go ahead and give us that an introduction for it. Give us the introduction. Um, Never Know. It it was based on a true story. Um, I wrote it while I was sitting in the living room. Um, and the, the whole message of it was, I guess you'll never know, like you're missing out on a great opportunity. You're missing out on a great person. Um, I'm tired of the confusion. I need reassurance. Like, what are we doing? Um, you know, pretty much don't lose out on something that's good for you. And, you know, so then you'll never know what, what, you know, the good is. Like, you'll never know what's to come and how much I cherished you and actually loved you and stuff like that. You so. have a good heart. You have a really good heart. I, <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, I want to, I really want every aspect of your life, personal, business, mentally physically financially spiritually i really want it to rise up for you because i can tell your energy is pure you have a good heart and you are deserving of everything good that comes your way i promise you that thank you so much Tampa. that really means a lot absolutely and i'm so excited for you to come down here so we can do this in person you guys oh, anybody yeah. that sees this you heard it when he comes to atl book that flight we doing this in person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, most definitely. We get Dope. with the team and everything. Facts, man. So we about to get into, again, a portion of this record, and we'll be back in just a moment. Y'all stay tuned. It's fire, it's fire, it's fire, it's fire, it's fire. It's fire. It's fire. It's fire. Can I get a night of something? A little reassurance about me, about you. Some clue that you feel like I can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, tell you it's nothing when you lack abundance. But to me, it's everything. Baby, I would do what I have to do to keep you. Baby, don't lose. Oh my gosh, like I, I listened to that earlier and it just gives me chills listening to that. What a great record. Like it it slick almost gives me a slight like island vibe. Mm -hmm. It really, really does. And that's such feel good music because what I tell people a lot in talking to these younger artists is a lot of the music that's coming out right now is what I call low vibrational music. Um, mm -hmm. There's really no substance. There's not a lot of thought that goes into it. They're slick clogging up the industry. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> you are, <laughs> get out of the way. You are 
creating such high vibrational music like that right there gave me chills when I listened to it like it slick almost made me emotional just listening to it because it feels <laughs> so right it feels so good I don't tell a lot of people that just just keeping it G um, <laughs> no I appreciate it Really? What what a phenomenal record. You're such a dope artist. And like I said earlier, everything that comes your way good, you absolutely have earned it and you deserve all of it. Thank you so much. That means so much. For absolutely. Real. I appreciate it. Most definitely. Thank well, thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm glad that we got to work through the, the audio situation. Um, we're about to put this right up on YouTube. So, you know, everybody that tuned in, checked in, it's your girl Tampa Mystic. We signing up out of here, y'all. <laughs>